all right but before we do that i want you to wear a smile <laughs> amen all right don't let um the protest be your reason for frowning okay nobody is responsible for your failure or your success as much as you are all right so tell anybody for me say things are happening in your favor say can you see it can you feel it it's happening already and jesus is glorified so today is our first sunday in the month of august hallelujah fourth of august to be precise and i want to encourage you please try to do an adjo amen <laughs> for those of us watching internationally adjo simply means thrift contributory thrift somebody is asking that what is the spiritual implication of adjo it only gives you a chance to have money that has momentum and then you can put it together those books i give you show me after service i want to do something with them you understand yes, so today we are going to be looking at something very important but before i get started i want to make some announcements that i think is good for housekeeping so when we come to a church like this by the grace of god you can see us meet here you know that you know very surely that we have an intention for choosing this venue for our services and what that simply means is that we are intentional about achieving a kind of church a kind of ministry that inspires people to growth that inspires people to greatness so if you have a friend that wants to grow you should be coming to that person with that person to church is that okay that when you come here one of my dream is that your vision will enlarge amen, amen. your character will change amen. you will encounter jesus amen. say that amen properly please amen. please reduce your urgency to blow all right reduce your urgency to blow just calm down all right don't blow and blow away you understand yes, uh -huh. calm down it's not about blowing there are very many rich people in this country that nobody knows them do you know what i'm trying to say and they are living a clean life all right very many sir don't be deceived though eh? very plenty and so i just want to invite you to that conversation that please calm down all right when you come to virtues are you listening yes, sir. please if you are listening look up eh? please eh? thank you you know one of the things i want you to know if you come to this ministry i want you to know you came to meet jesus are you listening and that encounter should produce in you a character it, the character that says lord help me lord i don't know it all are you listening eh and no don't come to church with an attitude of pride don't come to church with an attitude of i know it all nobody knows it all and eh? nobody knows it all are you listening eh because some people the way they listen to you they listen like as if they're the one that taught you mathematics it's not right eh? and you guys some of us you know and that's what i was sharing us with us about proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 a gentleman i was talking with the other day i said people think you look proud he said sir it's just a look i said pause proverbs 6 16 i said open it let's see what it says he says there are six things the lord hates he says seven are an abomination to god the very first one if media is kind to us let's read it together everybody if you don't mind one two go a pro look at our television today is it not beautiful this morning let's give the lord a round of applause the second one is coming by god's grace next week this is too tiny for my children's self do you understand Renzi? then a whole virtues will be used no this television must go for media or put it here for me to be seen myself or use it for those people that are late comments behind somewhere there to be squinting the eye what they do well we'll put a better television here by god's grace so from those that pledged last week was it last week yes, we're able to put this up to, it's not beautiful it's a 15 inches yes, let's give the lord a round of applause and appreciate god the way you are clapping you don't know that these things are good i know television is not a big deal but in the house of god we we agreed to buy and we bought yes. uh -huh. it's important that when people give their money they see what they put their money for and those of us that have not yet redeemed our pledge please try to redeem it so that we can get the second one next week the lord will bless all of us in jesus name some of us are thinking you know after we took the pledge some people reduce their pledge eh? why are you inside the house of god don't be doing those kind of why you eh? they came out of 100 but they reduced to 20. don't be doing like that okay because all those type of things is to confuse people even angels are not clear ah, what did you could talk before <laughs> nobody 100 you <laughs> all right all right let's read the scripture before i forget what i'm trying to do okay let's go one to go these six things let's read now eh? some of us are used to have a way of posing open your mouth and read in god's house i want to go everybody want to go these six things doth the lord hate very clearly 
I hate six things. He now says, the, yeah, like as if he just remembered. Yeah. Exactly. Seven are an abomination unto him. Let's read the things that the Lord hates. Number one, a proud look. He did not say he hates pride. It's the look. Is there any actor in this house? Can anybody act for us? Why she come? Are you, Timmy? Good to see you. Long time. Let me give him a round of applause and encourage him. Timmy, you must get this one very right too. Eh? The assignment is very simple. The assignment is to illustrate for us a proud look. What can a proud look look like? Washiri. Like as if waiting day. You know that kind of waiting day was up. Kai. <laughs> Give me a round of applause and appreciate it. <laughs> the guy got it too. That, that, you know, he, he is, that's the Gen Z version. Some of us that are a little more elderly, there's an attitude. They will just be looking like as if they gathered your generation. And they are empty. That's the one that is, it should be if you do like that, I will know that you are sound. That when you open your mouth, I do salute. Uh -huh. When you hear some people's emptiness, it echoes. Amazing. Eh? Very amazing. So the Bible does not say pride, though. It says the look. I didn't write Bible before you say pastor, you quickly put look inside. I didn't write Bible. It's Bible that says, I don't like a proud look. How can you, as a child of God, come to the altar of God pocketing? Are you okay at all? Are you okay? Are you okay? Why? That's not just proud look. That is pride. Do you understand? It's wrong. So, pride, proud, and you know, sometimes nobody will tell you because you think you are the alpha and omega of your life. Maybe especially if you are married or you are, you are blessed. You just believe that you know everything. We will correct you here. Yes, sir. I don't have gray head for nothing. Eh? You understand? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So I want us to please listen. And the reason I'm saying so is because the Bible tells us about the impact of the word. Look, I'm not afraid of anything. No. Yes. This empty chairs will soon be filled up. Amen. There's no way. If this word is true and of God, there is no way to remain empty. Yes, sir. Acts 19.20 says, So mightily grew the word, and it prevailed. Yes, sir. It will always prevail, yes, sir. sir. There was a time it was only me. I was the only one speaking this English. Only me. Shiki proto pikiti pikiti pikiti. People gathered. They left. I continue saying it. They gathered again. They left. I said, no problem. They gathered and they left. It is like that. If it is the word of God, it will attract people. What am I trying to draw your attention to? Don't be the wrong set of people. Don't be the wrong set of people. Are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Sir. The word of God always mightily prevails. So the first thing he says there is a proud look. The Bible says it's an abomination. Guess what happens? The word of God says God resists the proud. Not Satan. God does not delegate the resistance. God himself resists the proud. So it's not deputy God. It's not a God. Say this guy won't go far. Where is he going? Look for him. <laughs> don't go far. Set up. God. You wondering why some people are not going. That God is set leg. <laughs> you don't go. Where. <laughs> you are not going anywhere. <laughs> you are proud. The Bible says God resists the proud. I'm not the one that said it. James four. The Lord resists the proud, and He gives grace to the humble. Verse six. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? So I want us to please take note of it. A proud look, then a lying tongue. He puts the look even before the liar. And then he puts it even before the, in, the man that sheds blood. You see, that's how I look. Change your look. You see, that's how my face is. Change your face. You see, my face is hard like that. Change the hardness. Anything that will make you lose favor is not of God. When you have a proud look, even men look at you as if don't, this one is just leaving behind. Let him stay. Maybe he knows what he's doing. Let him stay there. That, I'm not inviting you to a confused look either. I'm inviting you to a humble look. Where is smile? You can't be wrong with a smile. You can't be wrong. Where is smile? Let your default face not be sadness. Some of us, we've made our default face in the mirror moody. Say, so that's how I am. You will change, oh. Amen. I say you will change. Amen. You can't continue like that. You understand? Yes, sir. See, that's just how I am. 
how you are is not is not your fault but how you end is your fault uh -huh. can't continue like that Look, that's not my message you you know that's just by the way gist i want to even do one small homologist in the course of the week i was listening to a message and the spirit of god said something to my heart and i want to just share with us you know some of us don't know how to get the blessedness of when we come to god's presence for example as you've come now after this service if i asked you were you blessed nobody will say no Abby? Yes, After, it's just a natural response. Who will say no? Were you blessed? Even if you did not hear anything, you say, Yes, I was blessed. But how do we really know a man is blessed? Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? How do we really know a man is blessed? One of the ways by which we know a man is blessed is that his thinking changes. If you leave a service and there's no thinking improvement, we can question if you were blessed. It's not that you were not blessed, but you're not conscious of the blessing. And whatever you're not conscious of is not functional are you getting what i'm trying to say here yeah? yeah so what that means is that you need to check if after a service there's an improvement in how you think that should compel you to make a decision to change or take an action that's how we know you are blessed now what does this mean in the application in the course of the week the spirit of god laid out something in my heart and that is the fact that many believers need to know how to get the blessings of wealth from God. If you are a giver, you are qualified to be a receiver. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Let me even say clearly. Even just for being human, you are qualified to receive from God. Not without even giving. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Just because you are human, all of us receive from God daily. Sunshine, life, you know, good, good health. I mean, there's so much we all receive from God without necessarily being faithful. I'm now telling you that for being faithful, there is a reward. And I want to share with you these four things, what I call the prosperity of the righteous. Open hearts leads to open minds and leads to open doors and leads to open hands. So it's very simple. All open hearts minds slash brain that's what i mean by minds and then doors and hands hearts minds and brain number two doors and hands what do i mean when a man gives to god from an open heart or comes to god's presence from an open heart what god does is that he sends a signal to his mind that's that man's mind if, for example you are a musician god will answer you through three major ways for all human beings now either through an idea or a wisdom a thought or he gives you a human being to come around your life or he impacts you supernaturally with his word or his spirit those are the three ways god answers prayer god will not come from heaven so when you pray to god what god does to your to answer your prayer is that he sends either a human being to you believe it now most people look for the human being but sometimes it's not the human being that will come yes. some other times it's a thought do this do this and do this you could just do i mean ah he walked though do you understand it's a thought another time it is the supernatural power of god you will just know that this one is not man that did this one for me Wow, the thing clear. Eh? You will know, like healing. When the thing go, ah, sir, the pain is gone. The pain is, is that one, nobody did it for you. It was not wisdom, it was the power of God. So this is how I put it. God answers prayers through wisdom, power, and relationships. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Say it after me. Say God answers prayers, God answers prayers. through wisdom, wisdom. Power, power, and relationships. So the thing you may be looking for might be in your house. But you don't have the wisdom to know what to do it might be around you but then you need wisdom to enter into that thing some other time is the power of god it's pure power of god no this one nothing you can't explain it it's god other times it's a relationship are you getting what i'm trying to say here it's a relationship and you need to look out for those things now when a man wants to prosper in his life he should look out for number one what god is dropping in his thoughts 
God never leaves us without an idea. If you give, for example, especially when your heart is open. That's why I said open hearts. If you approach God with an open heart, God will give your brain an idea. Your mind an idea. He will, you know, some people's mind, and that's important because the quality of mind that receives the idea will determine what he can do with the idea. So, for example, if God tells somebody here to start to sell something, let's assume, start to sell paints, for example, and the person says, ah, paints, who is buying paints? Nobody's painting the house. Economy is tired. That is you who knows about the sad side of the economy. Somebody knows that people are building houses as I'm talking now. That paint is an idea. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, it's an idea. Somebody says, ah, teachers need to upgrade, but they don't have time to study. Do online schooling for them, an LMS class, that's learning management system for them, so that they can catch up after class for small subscription and get this thing. You are solving a problem. You see, when you solve a problem, you will be rewarded. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? The quality of problem you solve, with the, if the woman that sells a while going by the corner of the road is solving a problem, but she will not be rewarded like the lawyer of Dangote. That also adds another point to it. Who you solve a problem for matters. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If Dangote will buy a while going, he will be too embarrassed to pay. To, let's not even go to Dangote. If I will buy a while going, I don't usually like buying it, but. When I want to go look, you know, we go, we go that direction sometimes. You are looking at me like, I see what's wrong with you people. If I will buy it, I will feel embarrassed to pay 100 naira at my level. Someone will say, 100 naira, he's supposed to be 70 naira. I can't be pricing that. What is that? Do you guys get what I'm going to say? Who you solve problem for determines how much they can pay you. Some of us are solving problem for the wrong person. You need to change. It's not that your business is not good. You are solving problem for the wrong people. Change it. What I just did now is wisdom. Update from heaven. Somebody's brain gets it. Another person say, "What did you talk?" You know, it's not my fault. We've said it. Wisdom has passed. Do you understand what I say? That one is not God's fault again. You are solving problem for the wrong people. That same problem in the right hand will pay you better. And it's not that God has not given you an idea. Lord, bless me. Lord, he has blessed you. Change who you are solving the problem for. Change your audience. Maybe I should change my audience too. <laughs> I'm just joking. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, the point I'm making is, you need to open your heart so that God can open your mind. Are you listening to me? This is one of the reasons I stopped going to gym. Oh. This is one of the reasons I stopped going to gym. Before I used to carry, if you saw me, before I was bigger than this, so some of you may know, some of you may not know. I was, if I blow you, you will know that there's impact. But I stopped. Do you know why? I realized that those that are bulky can only solve security physical problems. Physical security problems. I'm, it's me, oh. It's, it's, your, it's me that said, so I didn't say you should not be fit, oh. But I just said, ah, these people that I do, what is the model? What is the model? The best you can act is a bodyguard. Strong, big, chested person. Oh, God. And no Schwarzenegger did it. He retired. He's slimmer now. He's, he has adjusted. This is me. Oh, I'm not killing your spirit to be well built. Oh, six pack and all that. It's very good. Oh. But me, I said, this thing will not fetch eternal life. After this much of stress, I, I will stress my spirit, man. Pray fast, fast, fast. Stretch my soul. Read, 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 read. Now come and stretch my body. Die, die, die. I'm not dying. I'm going to live here. That's how I stopped, though. So I'm not doing mama will tell me let's register. I said, go. I'll, I'll be praying for you. The Lord will do it to you. To think and to write, to pray, to fast, to do all that is a lot of work already. I'm not doing it with you again. I won't come and die trying to live long. No, 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 no. So I say that I expect you to laugh, but you are not laughing. No problem. So, but what, what I'm trying to say in essence is that you need to know that God wants to bless you through ideas. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Somebody here can have an idea, for example. There is something called big man that does not like to stand on the road to do vulcanizer. We like to enter shops. Amen. Then they will gauge your tire. You know what they are using is correct. Not someone that the measuring meter is measuring him. You know, his, his blood temperature. He put away 38. You know, all those funny things. You know, 
and then you would think that your tire is correct until you get to the speed to check your tire why not gather vulcanizing situation just bring them together create a shed create free air brand them well it's like i i, I that, those all these things are don't let us go there so what am i saying to you you are waiting for god to do you and impact do something new he said the old i gave you what have you done with it do something new he said i'm not doing anything new you don't have to take care of it you know he said god did not say so i have said so on his behalf now and i'm his servant do you understand what i say yes so i want you to trust god for big ideas and in those ideas think about solving those ideas for the, the right people otherwise it will look like god has not been faithful to you are you listening to what i'm saying please you will testify Amen. from this small homologist it will help you then the next part of it is what i call open doors you must look out for doors that are open to you they usually come like problem they usually come like problem don't run away when you hear problem it's not your problem first for starters but if it is your solution it will bless you they say the big man's problem is that he does not have people to trust sir believe me you you are trustworthy now you are trustworthy by yourself i, I have one of my friends he's the pa to a very important man in this country you marriott now that man you know marriott is a big man i have a very small stature but he's a very big man he's a very powerful man i happen to know him he called me before we started to go and pray for marriott I went to lay hands, took me around. I was, amen, hallelujah. Amen. Look straight, my friend, and stay focused. <laughs> so we went there and we were praying for him. I was like, is this the man in my chest? You know that you can't say, so are you the owner? <laughs> okay, oh, it's not by size, though. <laughs> I tell you, it's not by size. So that's how I was looking. I said, ah, I'm still gisting. Is this what I should be doing at all? Okay, let me finish my gist and start to teach. So when we finished praying, I looked at my, I said, why did you choose to be? He said, if to be the PA eh, of that kind of thing, what you are controlling is more than working in some places for your generations. Yes. What am I just trying to say to you? Sometimes your path is different. Find it. Don't follow everybody. Find your path. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Find your path. Your path is different. And I pray God will show it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. Say a better amen. amen. I really, I really, the way I love you guys, eh, I really want you to succeed. Oh. I say, I want you to do well. I want you to do well. How many tell us how we do well? Say with an attitude of certainty. Say, I will do well. Say one more time. Say, I will do very well. Glory to God. So, open hearts, open minds. Some of us, your mind needs to be activated. You are suing clothes. You have not thought about brilliant ideas. You that you are creating songs, you need to come up with that. You that you can do something, physical exercises, start an exercise school. Your brain is just thinking, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have. it's not money we used to do everything. I'm telling you, sir. I don't want you to be small by the end of this year. Yes, sir. You must not be small. You must have improved on that little idea. Yes, are you listening to what I'm saying, please? Yes, okay, let me enter some gist today. So we're going to be speaking about love, loving, and living this month. And in this particular service, I will start with the subject of love. And I'm going to title this service, Love, the Heart of the Matter. Amen. Love, the heart of the matter, and the matter of the heart. Love, the heart of the matter, and the matter of the heart. In this month, I'll be talking with such clarity on the subject of relationships, marriage, dating, boyfriend, girlfriend. I love you i don't love you again i want to all of that i will even by god's grace if god grants me grace speak to um the subject of divorce a little all right yes, and then i hope that at the end of the day we'll have brighter marriages and Amen. better homes in jesus Amen. name all right let's bow our heads to pray father bless the teaching of your word as we go into your word let your word go into us in jesus name we pray Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Let's check what our scripture says. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Let us see what the word of God says. All right. 
So this scripture is what has led to the discussion I have been having with my sons and daughters. By the way, please, I want to invite you to join the workership of this church if you are not yet here. It's very simple. Just come to church and come for workers meeting. We are receiving that now. Yes, we'll ask some questions why you want to join us, but I want you to please know that this is the right time. We'll be doing some trainings starting this August. And yes, and then it will allow for, we call it Virtuous Training School. And um, I want us to please be excited and be part of it. However, that does not stop you from being a worker already. Are you listening, please? Yes, so you join the workership of the church so that we can strengthen our workership and grow together. Praise the Lord. So we can join the workership and we can grow together. And I'm also thinking about the importance of that because we, we, we are at that stage where we are going to be training ourselves and raising ministers and drilling ourselves. It's a very good time for you to be part of it. Um, next week, Sunday, no, upper Sunday, we'll be having a barbecue evening for the men. Amen. So, all right. Some sisters are not clapping. Some people are not happy. No weapon, no weapon fashioned against the men shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us shall. Let's not finish it. Let's not. It's not that serious. <laughs> Amen. So we have a baby. Please, our women are invited, but it is with ticketing. Amen. Yes. Ticket it. Amen. You are invited. Please, you can see the brothers. Joko is. Let's let's not react like violent people. <laughs> but they loved you to the extent they could. Yes, every parent. Some of us are parents now. It's the best I can do. I will do to my child. The other day, I was telling my son something, and he said that I'm aware. I said sorry. I did not know. I, I, I was probably trying to. Ah. Mama looked at me. And I said we both looked at ourselves. I said this life. Even if I'm so sorry, so mom, you can imagine. I'm telling you. Sir. <laughs> so what that means is that he's hearing what I'm saying, and I'm sure he does. He did not know well. Ah, he said that I'm aware. Don't worry. Ah, yes, don't worry. It's not your fault. So, uh, because in my own time, if I ever tried that with my father, I might not see the... the, the, the <laughs> I will sleep from that night till the next morning. And that's because somebody flogged my head. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, that? Uh, 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 some of you don't understand. <laughs> they will change your, 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 your composure will change. <laughs> but we thank God that at least things are changing. But let me tell you something. No parent means not to love his child. Some even sell their children just to make ends meet. I read in the news yesterday a woman that said she sold her baby for 400,000 naira. 400k. You collected the money. You, you really collected the money. Uh -huh. So she just said that instead of me being the one to show you that care, just go. But I also know some women are very mischievous. They believe that after collecting that phone, the child will still come back to them. Very criminal people. As I read it, that's what jumped on my mind. I said, you, you think, you know, because they believe that when the child grows up, you see, I'm going back to my parents, I'm going back to my parents. And true truth can be like that. But listen to me. You have done something very fatal. Very fatal to your history. The child can be very problematic, but it's a blessing of the Lord. I said it's a blessing of the Lord. I know some parents that don't like their children and i'm not kidding you what i mean by that is that the children are too stressful and some children are really stressful they came with stress from heaven from bad what did the cry itself you will know this one has plans to stress the parents the parent look and say i won't kill myself but my point is that everybody needs love help me tell your neighbors everybody needs love, everybody <clears throat> needs love. a life without love is not worth living a life without love is not worth. that's a good one write it down a life without love is not worth living so what i try to do here is to establish an understanding of that word love are you listening over there behind please behind are you guys listening uh, god bless you thank you you know that a life without love is not worth living when you see a, an adult growing up without love you will know even as we are seated like this some of us our behavior shows that we are lacking in love some of it is motherly love some of it is fatherly love yes you will see that some people grew up with their mother the way they think even though they are men is is woman like it's woman like they are men oh but the way that they think is woman like there are some women that the way they think is man like 
It's not their fault. But whatever deficit you have, your God will complement that emptiness. So we need to address the subject of love. Love is not just a thing. It's not just a feeling. It's first of all a person. So you truly cannot understand this love. It is felt. It can be experienced. But it is first of all a person. Just like truth. God is love. Jesus is truth. Holy Spirit is power. Choose the one you like. <laughs> you understand? They are all different things. So. Jesus never said I'm love. He never said so. The truth? Yes, Babe. Jesus never came out and said I'm love. Now we know he's loving. But he was an instrument of love. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Jesus was an instrument to express love. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. So Jesus is the one that comes to us as the expression. Of, as I want to enter you people's <laughs> This is the, it used to enter my body sometimes. But Jesus is the, <clears throat> is the expression of God's love. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? So truth is an expression of love. If you're in a relationship that lacks truth, you're not in love. Because truth is what builds trust. And trust is what makes love possible. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, so God is love. God is love. First John 4. God is love. A man that will ever truly love must know God. One of the reasons why you should know God before you start to talk about loving is because there are areas of your life that you will never know who you are until you meet God. Yes. Look, some of us think we are composed. I promise you, my people say in Yoruba land that there are some things you will not understand your limitations until the problem comes. Hey! <laughs> I was speaking to one of my sons yesterday. He said, sir, I have come to the cross of the road. That gentleman I showed you yesterday. He said, I've come to the cross of the road. I'm not very sure what to do next. And I was touched. Middle of the night, I had to speak to him. I said, no no but i had to end with this reality that it might look like because i'm a pastor i'm telling you this but there are some areas of your life you cannot cross if god is not with you true you might not have reached there but don't wait till you get there and get desperate before you need god you think money is all you need i promise you sir you will see money like this and say get out <laughs> let me move my glasses small let me laugh sir i've seen the rich cry hmm you will ah but there's Malachi. This is the house. Listen, that we got Oga is sleeping on the floor. He can't handle money is not the issue. Money, money is just like buying car, shoe, or something. It's an asset. Hmm. There is something called fulfillment. Life. Are you listening? Yes, what I call wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. You know, I was explaining the other day that body, spirit, and soul. Some people's body is decaying and their soul and their spirits is not able to help the body some people is the soul that is confused they are rich they are married but something is empty ah emptiness is a terrible thing only you know the disease only you i have money i everything is supposed to be fine but i'm not just happy you can't find it because you don't know you trust me sir that's why i want to encourage you that before you start to double into love know god first mm. yes, sir. know your level with god it will help you know how to say whether you love somebody or you don't love somebody. because you never really know you. that's why i like that guy's song it says uh can uh, you where i find you how did that guy say it uh, on john passion on purpose to know you more and more when i know you i find me you know that song yes, sir. some people are thinking we are, you know you know some people are thinking that we are singing something from heaven that they've never heard that song <laughs> the one they know is uh, unavailable so, <laughs> so 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 that song speaks to the fact that it is until i that i know god then i will find me just for the records if you don't know who sang that song is do so you can go and check it just one purpose one passion to know you more and more when i know you 
I'll find me. And it's scriptural. The Bible says, when we see him, then shall we know what we really are. For we shall be like him. Yes. So, I want to say that I'm not trying to sound religious. If you know me, I'm not a very fixated religious person. I will tell you scripture. I am not playing pranks with anybody here. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So, let's get it right. Why am I saying so, sir? You need to know God. You need to know God. And I'm not trying to sound nice. I'm not saying you should know religion. I'm not saying you should know uh, people. I'm saying you need to know God. How do we know God? How? This God is different things to different people. This God, to some people, is a terrorist. Ah, go and ask the Egyptians of old especially. They will tell you that the God of Israel is a very terrible God. <laughs> the name of Yeshua in the ears of a, a Philistine is terror or an Amalekite. No, 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 no. That God, he killed all our firstborn. What kind of God does that? What kind of God does that? Yes, some people preach that God doesn't kill. I'm not arguing with you. My point is that he did not deny when they said God that he's the one that killed. He did not deny it. You know, when, when somebody accuses you of something and you don't deny it, it's a sign of acceptance that you accept. When, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, everybody's first son and he knew the first son die die in every house in the whole of egypt those people don't see this god as a god of love do you understand what i'm to say that's why some people are still fighting israel to tomorrow you think it's another matter you kill all of our firstborn you destroy our land you take our territory since 1948 there has been problem even before 1948 how can a man decide to kill all Jews? Over 5 million, as I've as I told. It's not ordinary. Because they believe that this God that can do this kind of thing can be a terrible God. Let me tell you today. The God that you know is what you will experience. Yes, sir. Some people see God as a God of judgment. As you are going like this, he's planning to crush your head. Crush your head. Crush your head. That's what they will experience. Some people know this God as a jolly good fellow. Who doesn't have a problem? That's what they experience. That's why the Bible speaks about us knowing God. Knowing God. Now, there is no clearer way to know God in this present world than to know him as a father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> because this same God is a judge. Yes, sir. He will judge the whole world. Yes, sir. This, same God, <clears throat> this same God is a ruler. He will rule. This same God is different things to different people. But to us is our God and Father. Somebody say Father. Father. Say it properly. Say Father. Father. So this God is responsible for our lives. And the Bible says this God is love. First John 4, double check verse 8. You know? So I want to bring out the fact that though God is love, the part of him you know is what you will experience. Some people know God now as a holy God. That's all they want us to preach. God is more than just holiness. He's a lover. <laughs> He's a lover. He's a father. The story of the prodigal son in Luke 15 tells us the same thing. Yeah, look at it. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Why? For God is not kindness. God is love. Hallelujah. So you really can't start to talk about relationships or loving matters without knowing God. And I'm saying, the God of the Bible you know is the one that we manifest to you. Do you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. If you think God is poor, you know some people make poverty synonymous with holiness. Uh -huh. If you think all God can do is all God, God will not argue with you. That God just wants me to stay poor so that I will not be proud. No problem. Say, is that what you want to know me? I will be that to you. Ah. You would have thought if you say, no, no, it's not like that, too. <laughs> you know, some people think that as we are doing all this thing, pastor, do parting, he do this thing. This pastor is too funky. You know, some people have a problem with that. Yes. I, what have I done now? Is it just when this guy is looking too, he's not looking like someone that is holy. <laughs> Why? Their definition of holiness is that you should suffer <laughs> brethren there's time for the power of god this is the oh, that relax you can be doing that and be misbehaving yes. praise the lord Hallelujah. and i'm a very holy man by yes. god's grace 
So, why am I saying this to our attention? I want to start by being interested in knowing God. Some people want to have intimacy with other people without having intimacy with God. It's possible, but at some point you will be confused. You'll be confused. So, I'm not saying you know all of God. I'm just saying start to have a working relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I'm about to go into the loving part of the discussion, and that's going to be a little tricky. All right? Now, I, I wish I had... So, somewhere in my mind, I did not do the diagram. But I have it in my mind. It's actually in this book. I wanted to, draw, I mean, make a picture. Maybe I'll do that next time. Okay? But there's a picture of it. So, talking about love, I want to see how God describes it. I, I will, please, are you following me, please? In Matthew 22, verse 36 and 37... Excuse me, please. Matthew 30, 22, verse 36 and 37. Somebody was kind enough to ask Jesus Christ a question. And I used to wonder why Jesus Christ never said everything until they asked him questions. I don't know why. He never said, if nobody asked him, Master, how can a man, he said, except you'll be born again. It was a question. It was a question. If they didn't ask him in court, that's why we would go to heaven without telling us that I will be born again. And he did not mind. There may be more things now that he had to tell Paul. You know, he told his disciples, there are many things I want to tell you guys that you cannot handle. That he now told Paul, for example, he told Paul, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35. Ah, we'll never have known that it's more blessed. It looks more blessed to receive than to give. But Jesus came in 20, 35 of Acts and said, it's more blessed to give. So somebody asked Jesus Christ a question and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? What, what is the greatest of everything? Just tell us so that we will not want to pay attention to. See what your master answered. <laughs> your master? Yes, sir. My master. Amen. Amen. Jesus the Christ. See what he answered. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God first. Greatest commandment of scripture is to love the Lord your God first. With all your heart. With all your soul. And with all your mind. Please, after that was left. <laughs> When you finish loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, uh, with all your mind, what is left? In fact, one translation says, with all your strength. All your strength. Ah, that's a lot. After that, there's no space for any other thing. <laughs> but there's space. Look at how he said it. He said, the first is, the first, this is the first and great commandment. Are you listening? So, if you ever love a human being without loving God, you have not fulfilled the greatest commandment. Some of us love our wives more than we love God. We love our family. We love our children more than we love God. But you know the way he did it? He tied it together. Look at what he said in the next one. He said, this is the grace. I'm going to break up. Your amplified was good. Bring that your amplified back. Now I was planning to use it now. No, the one before this, that's it. He said, this is the great, most important, principal, and first commandment. Loving the Lord. Someone say, I will love the Lord. I will love the Lord. Say like though you, you mean it. Say, I will love the Lord. I will love the Lord. Let me tell you something, ma. You can't love the Lord and fail in your marriage. You can't. You can't. I'll show you some scriptures today. I hope you believe me. You have to believe. It's not even me. It's scripture you should believe. So, it says, that's the first and the great and the most important commandment. Do you love the Lord? I need somebody to love me for me. Keep quiet. You need Jesus first. You need God. Okay. <laughs> you need Jesus first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we say these things, people think that we're trying to deny them of a good life. Look, God who knows this life programmed it that you cannot live it without him. Yes. There's a way you will be rich, eh? You will run mad. There's a way you can be in love. You will misbehave. <laughs> You've not seen some adult men misbehaving because they think they're in love. They will stand outside. First of all, those, those um, Catalino and this thing used to give us an expression of it. Uh, passion. You know those passion? Catalina and Sebastian. Uh -huh. You remember? You're looking like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And you know some people love that program. Yes. Hey, no light. They will, they will greet the neighbor they are fighting to come and watch Salvador. 
especially when Asalo that died, you know, they're, they're not sure whether it was him that was still living. Love. Ah, and you know the thing, it resonates in everybody. Everybody knows that deep feeling of needing intimacy, needing someone to confide in, needing someone that you know will be there for you, needing someone that you know can sacrifice for you, needing someone that can assure you that it's not just that you just say, because people can use in the hand, that's why I do it. But I will, I'm even in that, I'm, my head is clear. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey, I know what I'm doing. Because some of us don't love ourselves and we try to validate ourselves from other people. Let me say this to you marriage is not proof you found love. Marriage is not proof you, you've only found someone that agreed to live with you for the rest of time. Yes. I can tell you for free. <laughs> You've only found someone that you... And that's why it's dangerous to marry someone that you're not in love with. Or that doesn't love you. Personally, loving somebody and somebody loves you back is a blessing. If you love and they don't love you back, it is terrorism. Concealed as affection. It's not right. You need to be loved back, sir. If you don't know the meaning of being loved back, I promise you, it is you will prefer not to have been in love. So this is why I want you to, first of all, love yourself. Say amen. amen. How do you love yourself? Start by loving God. Alright? Start by loving God. Just follow God. You know why? The act of loving God makes you trust God enough for him to help you control who comes to love you. Are you listening? Yes this understanding will save you from the pain and agony of meeting a witch for a wife like i said we all need love somebody help me tell me say you need love. need love tell your neighbor like you're not afraid say stop pretending you need love people don't want to love because they consider love to be vulnerable the vulnerable side of you know you're vulnerable and all that and i'm going to get into some intimate parts into, into intimate conversations in this next couple of sundays because this is the month we talk about relationship please if you have question write it down anonymous question write it down no matter how hard i may not be able to touch about your own matter please but write it out all right i will be able to answer it as a question those that have married will tell you that soon enough you realize that this person is a friend it's a commitment more than a feeling it's a commitment more than a feeling please married can you just give me a confirmation here? It's a commitment. As lovely as mama and I are, sometimes I know she just tolerates me. Man of God. All of that. Yes. Because when I start, you will not believe it's me. Just keep looking straight like that. <laughs> what am I trying to do to us today? I want us to start to look at our love lives. Now, if you are married already, you can improve your love life. If you're not yet married, I want to give you a chance to choose right. You will not marry a witch. Amen. You will not marry a wizard. Amen. Quickly, by way of introduction, let me say something. So, it means that there are several people, because several people don't know God, several people don't know themselves. And I'm going to say this, please, without prejudice, I'm not chauvinist, I'm not anything, but it will seem to me like, especially the woman does not know herself. Now, listen to me. Most men they define themselves by productivity most women define themselves by intimacy and productivity intimacy women want intimacy like like men do but not at the same level and because we're talking about love loving and living productively i want to speak about that side what i have realized is that an average woman does not know who she is not the power she wields. <laughs> so as a woman, you come out of your, the womb. You grew up like you, you are, all of you. Small time, you guys started to do daddy and mommy. I don't know if you guys did all of that. Some of you <laughs> didn't do daddy and mommy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of us never had sand in our compound. <laughs> that means you never play sway. <laughs> please don't feel bad suffering is not in play test when <laughs> we suffer too much <laughs> because now we're making you jealous that you <laughs> you had a good background the lord bless you <laughs> so the point is this 
some ladies grew up just knowing the guy started noticing that there's a difference between this guy and me got to age nine we're in the same class age 10 we're in the same class sorry about that we got to you know we kept going on and as we kept going on we started noticing differences small time they said don't let him touch you ah uh -uh. what is going on ah uh kill -uh. let me buy then you now see blood at puberty you're like am i sick what is wrong most mothers don't even discuss it with their children the child has to start to find what what am i is there something maybe she's been watching a film since and they've seen blood you know they say ah ah i have problem and mother says no it's puberty it's puberty what's puberty mommy they say that ah, it's because you are growing up as a growing up person you have blood and uh, so now start to see ah what is going on here ah, ah. then they they, they notice ah, what is all this then someone now tells them you are beautiful which beauty viva wo So what I did was that I took time to think about it. I, I won't say I studied it, but it's kind of some kind of small study. I realized that men are proper at bias. Don't clap. Oh. It's not. I was outside just now inside the car. And I saw an elderly man. A lady passed. You know how ladies in their simplicity just greet. Good morning, sir. Now, I know some ladies do it as strategy. But, yeah, yes, they believe that it's a sign of culture. But, the, forgive me, oh, if the man watches this video, he knows his name I'm talking about. If you see the way he was following the lady, now say, hey, sister, hover. Proper elderly man. And he was like, oh, you know, oh, 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 oh. I said, Kai, this see, man you are under a spell but you know what i found out it was god that did it like that that man will forever like a woman listen to me sisters they say that man to like woman if he didn't like woman he will not like you yes what most women want is control control your liking for me alone <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what wants. Yes, sir. Control your liking. I should be sufficient for you. Yes, but that sufficiency is not just because you're a woman. Your physical body is not enough to compel a man's attention. Believe it or not, that is true. <laughs> hallelujah so most women use the physical apparatus and pay attention a lot to that but the bible says that let it be the hidden man of a heart the the hidden man in the heart of an inward virtue ladies i want to say this to you don't let the only thing a man likes about you be your body or beauty there's so much more to you than that yes, you will not believe that some women's greatest asset is virginity. And one even asked me over my table in my office, Sir, how come I did not pass jam even though I'm a virgin? I'm like, how? Do I stand before you, I cannot lie to you. How do you translate that into jam form, jam exam, jam results? I cannot lie before God and man. I, and, and, I, I will not lie to you. I will never do that. I will never do that. Trust me. Not even like, I can't even conceive the thoughts, let alone make it an example. When I had it, I was like, can anybody hear what I just had? You, because it was a counseling period. That is, you might not be the person I'm talking about, but I'm telling you how some people think it exists. That they believe that they are trustworthiness chastity and fidelity is the greatest asset the man should never think about that is not true sir that i'll be mad any it's not true there are other things that are important to the man for example a man needs encouragement you can do it let the mumu in him die uh -uh. you can't just be looking at me 
One of the problems I used to have in the earlier days in my ministry days was when I finished preaching and teaching, and maybe mama doesn't have an opinion about it. Ha! It's a problem for me. I finished talking. All I've been saying does not make an impression on UK. You must tell me what you thought. Ah! You must have an opinion because I wanted to be encouraged whether I was doing well or not. Why we like sexual intimacy a lot? Because we ask, is it food? It is food for the soul. Glory to God. Please, whatever I'm saying is not absolute for all men. If it doesn't touch you, exclude yourself. I'm speaking in the generic sense and I'm making provision for exceptions. So, what does this mean? I want you as a woman to give us that scripture, please. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. As a woman, as you turn the beauty, turn the brain. As you shake the hair, shake the humanity in you. As you shake the prowess, shake the power. Have kind words in your mouth. I think women underestimate the power of their womb, their words, and their wealth. Wow. You have so much. Look, there was a case I was involved in with someone. I was supposed to mediate. I was supposed to handle the mediation. Family A sat here. Family B sat here. This person is like the brother to this. No, 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 no. Sorry. This husband was liking the sister of this person. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? This person's wife is in family. So the sister, the sister to that man's wife, he was, you know, that one was around. And what was the problem? The wife was, was hardly ever useful in encouragement. <laughs> but the sister, oh, you're trying, oh, you are doing well. Yeah, yeah. The man did not know when he started gravitating towards the sister. Oh, hey, before you say this, it was not the sister he wanted is what the sister was offering mm, yes. and the relationship was not strong enough to say stop stop because the value was greater than the resistance yeah. do you guys get what i'm saying at yes, all? no justification for mischief but i tell you if a man sees a cat giving him that cat, he will like the cat so man likes to my mind like, sometimes it's what that girl that crazy side chick is offering that you are, he doesn't, what, do you know what it means for you to reduce yourself to some people? Some people are not worth your time. But I will tell you this. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I know you, you came to hear, that shall love, I'm not your conventional pastor. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Men, before you get to relax, I'm coming for you to, hmm? But I want you to know, women, you control this world. Yes, sir. When God stepped back after making man, he saw something was still missing. It was a woman. After washing his hand by the tap, there was no tap. Oh. But it, <laughs> you know, some people don't know how to imagine now. Washing his hand by the tap after creating man, he went again to get his hand soiled. This time with blood. Should be others was with mud. He opened man's lip pulled out a rib do you understand what i'm saying here yes, put it out and from however created a woman and said hey you don't balance and never came back to create anything mm. nothing again women let me tell you something you underestimate your beauty yes. the effect you have on men and i'm telling you this sincerely because some of us we feel we're not beautiful enough you are fine enough I will assure you, no matter how fine you are, there's somebody finer than you. He said, Pastor, if I'm that fine, why don't I have a husband? It's your character sometimes. Mm. Not all the time, sometimes. Some of that time, it's not your fault. It's something you can't control. Some of that time, you post with the ones that came. When I was asking Mama out, I can show you our pictures. I was looking like a casualty. I said, babe, and that's how i would come i was not joking i was clear-headed i was ready to marry at age 19 if necessary because i had heard kenna Hagen married early i didn't plan to stay and let me just say this to you it's not god's will that we marry late all this let me make i blow first make i get money first it's not god's will 
If our fathers did well, we should have had some backing and leverage in life. Not do well. I'm not angry. For Baba Farouk, you get angry never. But I'm just telling you that if they did well, we should have had leverage. You should finish school and be able to know what you are doing with your life. Hallelujah. So I'm speaking today about love and loving. And I want us to establish the fact that it is important to know God first. And I'm saying to women, don't only settle for the beauty. Listen to me, people. There is a wisdom in a woman. There is a wisdom. In, most women don't like stress. They just want soft life, soft girl, baby girl kind of life. I'm a baby girl for life. I like it. It's sweet. But carry life inside your life. Be a life giver, ma. Be a life giver, ma. You'll be shocked that somebody is noting you. I was watching Mama go like this. Go like that. We are all young. Go. He said me to read my books. I was looking at a woman. I was, ah, who is this one? Who is this one? I had a star, one of my guys on campus. Now I was a campus pastor. Now you know, campus pastor. We are big boys. So you know that kind of thing. I say, you Jiblo, come here. He says, sir, what's my? I said, go and look at that lady. Find out who she is. You know what I'm saying? And Jiblo, Jiblo, now my guy. You know, Jiblo. He overdid the work. Went back. He made inquiry. Now I don't even know what he asked. I don't even. Know. When I was sending, I didn't even know who I was sending him to. But he went to go and inquire. She said, "It's all clean, sir." Because it's true. Some of us, you are about to date somebody that is a cultist babe. Cultist don't vex. You now say, "Lord, deliver me." You, you did not do your background check. <laughs> Find out who is looking that direction. You understand what I'm saying? I saw the lady rolling hips. I said, what's this? And that time Shakira was raining. Shakira, Shakira, you know that hips don't lie. Hey, I said, this is my destiny. Yo. <laughs> so, I said, these hips must not lie to me. I said, Jiblo, go and find out. She did not know. She was just in her own, just, you know, in fact, she was playing to Jack, Jack Ba that time she was doing sat one you know some of us know sat one yes. american schools so i was just studying and she'll be reading on that tree chewing gum like this i was looking that you know some women don't know how to even chew gum you chew gum some elegance in my hand. one of the reasons why we chew gum is not just to show that we can have we have gums no it's to show that you know our breath is fresh some don't know that they never told them no mint no mouth freshener Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> By the same token, so I, what? What I want you to know here. Are you listening? Yes, I hope we're getting blessed. I'll soon yes, be done. Just, today's just introduction. It's going to be a great month. Yes, Ask questions, but please let me let you know. It's time for your marriages and your love life to heal up. Amen. Whatever was wrong, God will heal you. Amen. What man cannot help you do, God will help you Amen. do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, I said that to bring some things to attention about the importance of you having a sense of value. Now, listen to me. Love is generally expressed in three ways. I've said it before. Expressed, I said. Number one, love is in giving. Forgiving. And sacrifice. Let's say that after me. Say love, so say love, is love is in giving, forgiving, forgiving. and sacrifice. sacrifice. Those three things are very powerful guides to knowing whether you are expressing love. I love you. I love you. How much have you given? I love you. I love you. How much times have you forgiven? I love you. I love you. How much times have you sacrificed? Are you guys get what I'm saying here? Whenever you claim you love someone, just check those three things. How much can I give? How much can I forgive? And how much can I sacrifice? If we add these three things to our lives, our love lives will have less crisis. Less fight. Some people now, they are not talking as spouse because they are fighting their, their spouse, you know, their partner. And they are living in the same room. Shown genetic, you know? Virgin. Because pride won't let him say, please, I'm hungry. Never. Just come. Look, 
It's not by hardening your feet, sir. Nobody's heart is of stone. Everybody is human. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And the woman is confused sometimes. I later discovered it was confusion. No? So I, used to, I used to think it was pride. And I'm not really talking from the statistics of my wife. I'm talking from the statistics of many learnings. The way women interpret things is different from how men interpret it. And we should give ourselves the permission to be human enough. If you are a woman, let me permit you to be woman and think like a woman. If you are a man, and let me just say this to you, don't generalize your woman with everybody. There are some things that are peculiar to your wife that is peculiar to her. She's not everybody. Hallelujah. Same is true for men. Not every man does like every man. So what I want us to admit today is the need for gender differences in the matter. And I will close with this conversation. I titled this love, the heart of the matter and the matter of the heart. And what do I want to address with this? Look at what it says. Are we ready to read? Please, people of God, can we read this together? Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, I hope you are not too tired. Eh? Yes, Please encourage me to say amen. Yes, let's, cl let's close with this. Look at what it says. Verse, let's use Amplified Classic, okay? Or even, even KJV. It's fine. Everybody, please, let's read. One, two, go. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible. That is the heart that is not corruptible, okay? Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The Bible says that there's a thing called the meek and a, a meek and quiet spirit. Not mouth, not life. Your spirit is quiet. It is meek. Meekness there will mean readiness to learn. Hallelujah. Look, trust me. I've been married for close to 18 years and dated for 22 years or something. That's something. The same woman. That's something to learn from. Hallelujah. Help me clap now. If not divorce, I talk now. I'm not going to clap. Small divorce now. They will just, like, we knew it. We knew it. Like I see that the ones that made it happen. We say we don't stay with one person now for 22. You know if you thank God for us. So he says, but let it be the inward adorning. You see that? Inward adorning of the hidden person of the heart. Are you listening? It's talking about women here. With the incorruptible and unfading charm. Jazz. That your that in a charm. Men are spelled by it. For example, you are angry as a man. And your wife knows how to rub your head and say, sorry now, sorry now. The mumu in you rises. And say, thank you. For making me mumu. What a mumu bought into press. But some woman is angry. He says, you are angry again. You are an angry man. The Bible says, anger lies in the bosom of it. I say, fool. Ah. I fool. <laughs> you, show me the mumu among us. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? He says that your beauty is a charm. Ma, sir, what we use charm for is to spell people. Ha. That you know how to, you know your husband's code. Of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of even God can resist it. That's what he says. That it's precious in the sight of God. God likes that kind of heart. Women, I want to say this to you. Please, and I say it to the women of Virtuous Christian Center. Study the scripture. There are three kinds of marriages for those of us that want to learn. There's traditional marriage. Daddy Kazim. Your food is here, sir. That's traditional marriage. There's contemporary marriage. Hi, sweetie. Please help me get the, kinch, the, the food from the kitchen. It's inside the microwave. Help me bring it to the table. That's do you understand what I'm saying? There is Christian marriage. Contem traditional, contemporary, and Christian marriage. You choose the one you want to apply. There are implications for all. There are 
are implications for all. The Christian marriage has the offer of saying, sweetheart, it's time for lunch. Can we go together? Let's go. Amen. Please. Um, you know, there is the mutual respect. Are you getting? Not the defiance to the man. He's a man, I'm a woman. It's just the W in front of me that changes us. No, 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 no. It's more than that. So some people have chosen contemporary marriage in the church and want to get Christian results. It can't happen. You have to be a Christian to get Christian results. Can I hear your amen? amen? It's criminal to be practicing another thing and be expecting this kind of results. You are practicing contemporary relationship. You want Christian testimony. No. That's contemporary. It's not as if it's bad. You are a man and a woman. We met in the shop. You buy your shop. You pay your bills. Everybody pays his bills. Everyone knows what is going on. It's contemporary. You take your car. I take my car. You walk. I walk. We end, end, end. That's contemporary. And if you choose it, it's your business. But we are Christians, sir. And there's a Christian relationship. I hope this message is entering our spirits. So what I want you to watch out for as a sister is this. I'll just close with this last scripture. So look how this is. For it was thus that the pious women of old who hoped in God were accustomed to beautify themselves and were submissive to their husbands. To be submissive is not to be foolish. It just means that you defer to someone. You defer. You defer. I will encourage you to pick marriage mentors or relationship mentors. It will help you. Some contention you have. There are times that mama and I have submitted ourselves to a mentor. There was something that happened one time in the UK. I'm not going to tell you, but I'll tell you what happened that solved it not the problem you know i was so concerned about something and mama was not accepting or agreeing i just called my mentor he was also in whether he was on his way he was in u.s thank you man and so we call him it's on speaker what happened sir is, do you see what i'm saying you know i could have said my friend i was a pastor on campus so i was all of you know, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I don't understand. <laughs> Somebody that I literally told my staff pastor to lay hands on her to speak in tongues. Do you know the feeling of saying that's my daughter in Christ? Oh my, she's dealing with me anyhow, yeah, and I can't do anything. Guess what? If you wanted to misbehave, you are in UK. If she shouts too much, you are in jail. Not it's not <laughs> A mentor we put it on speaker there's no shame in it i'd rather keep my marriage and prove i'm right i'd rather prove my, keep my marriage there's no i'm not there's no pride to say hey, i'm divorced i'm free what freedom you couldn't keep a human being how do you want to keep a church one human being god gave you couldn't keep it say lord make me great in life great god great honey so it cautions me are you listening to what i'm saying that's what we put up for speaker. Oh. Ah, Reverend, I said, sir. The bishop, yes, sir. <laughs> Man, oh, yes, sir. What happened? I was reported like a small child. When I finished, I asked myself, but you should have known this answer since. It was pride. So the scripture tells us for men, look at it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah? You know, we're talking about women. Please follow us. He said, For it was that. Hey, okay, so he said, It was that, those that Sarah. We go back first. Let's finish that five first properly. Thank you. It was those that Sarah. Eh, eh, are we here now? Don't you? Eh? For it was those that the pious women of old who hoped in God were accustomed to beautify themselves and were submissive to their husbands, adapting themselves to them as themselves secondary and dependent upon them. This is the Christian marriage. You don't just come up and say, I want to build a house. You defer to your spouse. Hello? Contemporary house can build a house and even tell the man to pay rent. It's, it's, I mean, you've got to pay the rent. Won't you pay rent if you're living in a house? And the guy says, okay, I'll pay rent. I'll pay rent. It was thus that Sarah obeyed Abraham, following his guidance and acknowledging his headship over her by calling him Lord, Master, Leader, Authority. Don't forget I told you, you can liberate yourself. I say I'm free. I don't want all these um, defining Abraham, Lord, Lord, which is Abraham is Lord. I beg, I'm human. We're human. We're both human beings. I never argue with you. It's just that you are practicing contemporary marriage. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that when you reach the future, you will know that contemporary cannot bat Christianity. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. No, it's not that you practice. It's your business. Uh, please, if you understand what I'm saying, please say Amen. 
purpose. I have not said you should not practice contemporary. I'm just saying to you, you will get to a point where you realize that it is right for you as a wife to defer to your husband. That's why I don't want any woman to marry a stupid person. Because it's dangerous to commit your destiny to a stupid. It was thus that Sarah obeyed Abraham following his guidance and acknowledging him as leadership over by calling him Lord, Master, Leader, and Authority. And you are now her true daughters if you do right. And let nothing terrify you. Don't be embarrassed by it. Don't be hysterical about it. Not giving, you, giving way to hysterical fears or letting anxieties or nerve you about it. Do you understand? Don't be afraid that Abraham will not treat me right or that he will not. He, he, what if he means? No. If it's a Christian marriage, trust me, God knows how to fix the guy. <laughs> That has been the problem. Man has always wanted to collect his, his responsibility for his life back from God. Give it back to me. I want to take charge of my marriage. God says, you want your marriage? Yeah. Take it. That's collecting it back. Bah! Hey, have my liberty has become contemporary marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it is Jesus marriage, if it is Bible marriage, if nobody has told you, I am shouting it out to you now. Don't set yourself up for a divorce in contemporary marriage. He now says in verse 7, he now talks to men. In the same manner or way you married men, you see it's clear, should live considerately with your wives with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation. Honoring the woman, honoring the woman, honoring the woman, honoring the woman, honoring the woman as physically the weaker. You see your wife carrying luggage, you say no, it doesn't matter. That's how it is. Well done, sir. Well done, sir say she is she, 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 she's my you help her it's a shame your wife is carrying luggage like it's a shame with all your muscle yes, <laughs> you collect it from i know nobody told you but i'm telling you now yes, your wife is carrying cake and you are happy uh -huh. up the ladder turn on generator uh -huh. my wife does not know what that means yes, i don't even allow it home or abroad I can send somebody to please come from another house to come and on generator and please go. Why would my wife be pulling generator? Go to start. Chug, 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 see. Even before we marry, and some people don't see it. She's carrying a baby, carrying luggage, carrying everything. And you think that's what her work is? You're a wicked man. You're an illiterate. Honoring the woman as physically the weaker, but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace of God. God's unmerited favor of life in order that your prayers may not be hindered or cut off. Otherwise, you cannot pray. If... Why? Because I did not regard my wife well. You treat your wife with sensitivity. Is my wife you can ask. And it's nothing. What's on your mind? Why are you looking like this? What's going on? Why are you not smiling? What happened? I'm always checking. One of the best times of my life is to watch my wife sleep. I'm just be looking at her like this. Eh? Sleeping. I, under my cage. Uh, sometimes I used to wake up. Or, or to talk, I wake up. Wake up. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why am I doing this to us? I want our marriages to work in this church. Are you listening to me? Yes, Don't come for private counseling again. No, this is the counseling I'm giving you. If your problem is that complex, no problem. But make sure it's complex that it's not available in open space. That your situation is really very different. <laughs> and we know that it's really critical. But I'm saying to you, sir, religion, and some women, you see them, so to say, they are of easy virtue. Anybody can sleep with them. It's not a testimony, ma. You are deficit in something. In discipline. And I want to encourage you women. One of the problems you will have in your mind, if too many people run across your body, is that you will have a problem trusting. You will have a problem believing. You will have a problem of valuing yourself. Are you listening? You have a problem of valuing yourself. The, the Spirit of God can help you but I, and then I want to also add this to be an angry woman is to be setting yourself up to be a witch yes, sir. anger I, I have to stop you see what I said I need a timer 
We'll continue by the grace of God next time. Amen. Are you blessed today? Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate Jesus Christ. You know, I just came back to the to my phone now and saw the time because this one is not sure. I don't can't see this one very well again. The light is reflecting it. Amen. But are you blessed this morning? Yes, sir. Okay, let me just finish that thing about anger. Women, listen to me. Listen, are you listening? Yes, sir. Brothers, also listen, please. As I grow in marriage, I've come to learn. And I, when I say I grow, I want to remember that I counsel marriages. I'm not only practicing marriage. I counsel several. Several. I, without exaggerating, it can't be less than 50. I cancel married. I cancel divorced. I cancel to be married. I cancel those that are not even planning to marry yet. So I have a broad range from where I'm speaking from, both within and without the church. Let me tell you one thing. Any woman whose anger is louder than your voice, whose anger overwhelms her sensitivity towards you, is danger for your destiny. I said it and I'll put it in a book. I can give you guarantee and you know women are short-tempered you just think they are beautiful they don't have tolerance for nonsense like that most women that's why they are more effective in organizations yeah because it is good for productivity but it's not good for intimacy and that's exactly what they need anger we finish everything you have built go and ask moses what you love most will walk past you like this and because it's an emotion they feel so strongly about they feel the urgency to express it please trust me brothers and sisters i'm your father in the lord jesus christ are you listening to me lose your right to be angry you will live longer try you will not die if you are a little more patient are you listening that thing is passionate with you you don't want it to go you want it to be expressed we've got your message don't think by tearing everybody down or doing terrible things or threatening us with divorce is what will make it work. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Don't let anger reign in your heart. Anger is normally supposed to have been a man's thing. But men have come down these days. <laughs> ah, reality has shown men sense. Huh. Calm down. It has now moved to women. Before it was men raping men, women. Now there's more female rape than male rape. Because men have known that if you rape, you are jailed. They will kill you. Women are now using the liberty because they like the affinity. Men are keeping to themselves now better. Zipping up more. Ha! Oga, hmm. you will be surprised. Men are locking up more, zipping up more. <laughs> they want trouble. Ha! They've been the society goes back and forth. Now, most women are angry birds. Once they're not in control, they manipulate everything. Oh God, I want to beg you by the mercy of God. And I'm not saying this. If you know mama, you know that she's not an angry bird. So I'm not speaking because my marriage is angry. No. I'm speaking because I counsel people. I see people. Are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Sir. I see things. I'm involved. Calm down, sister. There are things within your control. There are things outside your control. Yes, You'll be angry that I don't have money. Do you have... Job and Mujari. So, please listen. I want to close with this conversation. All of these things I've said are not easy to achieve without the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not easy. That's why you need a church like this. A pastor like me. Yes, sir! Tell you. The blessing, the blessing in it is that you will see the results. Yes, sir! Because some people just think it's because we are fine. Mama is fine. Bishop is fine. That's why their marriage is working. No! We do the principles. Ma, what you just did is not consistent with what we believe in this home. This is the far-reaching implication of this. You have to be wise as a man. Are you listening? I really want us to have beauty because marriage is beautiful, sir. It's terrible to be alone. It's not God. It's not man that said it. It's God that said it. It's not good for a man to be alone. Our marriages will work. Amen. Stretch out your hands like a funnel and say, Lord, I receive grace for my relationship. Can we talk to God this morning and make it a prayer and say, Father, I obtain mercy and grace for this relationship. Can we receive grace this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Can you pray for your marriage and your relationship and say, Father, I receive help. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
thank you holy spirit of god we give you praise in jesus precious name we pray quickly because of time if you are sick in body please stretch up your hands or put your hands wherever it is that hurts you if you are sick in body please put your hands or your you know somewhere the lord has asked me to always pray along these lines at every opportunity father thank you because i release your healing power now in the name of jesus i command healing to everybody and every hand laid on any part now in the name of the lord jesus christ i command the healing power of jesus christ to come upon you urgently now in the name of jesus i rebuke that sickness that may be caused by a demon i command it out in the name of jesus i speak peace over that body and i declare that you are healed whole and delivered so shall it be now in jesus name we pray amen say believe in amen I want you to trust God for your healing in that area. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Exercise yourself in that area. God is a healer. Number two, I want to pray for somebody here that is trusting God um, for a, an urgent miracle. You want God to do something for you this week. I'm not just talking about casual miracle, Lord. I want to, I'm talking about the one that you have deadline. The one that if it doesn't happen, are you listening to what I'm saying? Help me lower the volume of that thing a bit, please. That if it doesn't happen, you will know that, ah, men will laugh at you that's the kind of urgent miracle i want you to pray for if you're like that please raise out your hand let me pray with you father thank you for giving me this mandate to pray for those that have need for urgent miracles firstly lord i release the ministry of angels over that situation i ask lord that the angels of this commission will support these ones that the angels you have assigned to me and this commission will stand up and give this ones a testimony lord let no one here escape the testimony i don't know the needs but you know them all and lord therefore i empower their angels in victory to deliver testimonies let no one escape this song of victory let your name alone be glorified thank you eternal father in jesus name we pray amen